I'll uh, start out talking just about injuries. So Kase was able to go through part of practice today, still did not uh, complete a full practice. He felt fine. It was just the plan going in as we gradually return him to play. He's day to day. We'll uh, see how he responds to the activity, the increased activity from today's practice load and uh, get him a good workout in the morning and then see where he, where he is from there. Uh, Ramel did more in practice today. He got a little bit of live work and uh, he will be out tomorrow, but uh, it was good to see him uh, back on the floor getting some live uh, full court work in. Now just getting him back into game shape is, uh, is where we're gonna be with him after an extended time off. Blaze is continuing to ramp up activity he is still a ways away from being ready to play in a uh, in a full game being cleared uh, but it's good to see him out there getting shots up and, and doing some some light running and then hopefully as we continue on with him the next step uh, next progression is to get him cutting and moving and then uh, integrate him back into full uh, practice mode um, and then, oh and Juwan Juwan uh, Juwan will be out tomorrow he, he continues to be uh, day to day With uh, Kase, what's kind of the, the balance there with wanting to get him acclimated back in before the schedule vamps up next month, but also being careful not to have any setbacks? Like, I guess, how cautious are you being with him right now? Well, I, I, he, it, we're going to get him back in there when he's ready to play, and he's, he's close. There's no doubt about it. And, yeah, you know, the one thing we don't want to do is throw him out there before he is completely 100% ready and then he has some type of setback that pushes him back a couple weeks. We don't want that to happen. So we're taking a very cautious approach with Kase, uh, but he's made unbelievable progress the last, uh, whatever it was, couple weeks since he had the sprain. And, uh, you know, again, we'll see how he's doing in the morning. Uh, if he doesn't have any soreness, we'll get him through a full shoot around tomorrow and then make the decision from there. But we feel really good about where Kase is right now and, and hopefully get him back on the court soon. What can you say about the, the two signings today? Yeah, really, really excited about uh, the guys that, uh, that signed with us today, starting with Nick Janowski. Nick is one of the purest shooters that I've seen at that age. Uh, Coach, uh, Coach Nate and I went up and saw him in an open gym type setting and they're face guarding him in practice and he's still finding a way to get open. He's got a tremendous basketball IQ. He can play with the ball in his hands. He can play off the ball. Uh, but in our read and react five out spaced offense, he's going to fit in beautifully uh, with that. One of the most competitive kids I've ever seen at that level. His first workout every day is at 4.30 in the morning. And then he's in the gym usually three times, sometimes four over the course of the day. And just to see his competitive fire in spirit, even in an, in an open gym uh, type setting, it's exactly <laughs> what we're looking for. Uh, you know, as we continue to try to put the right guys into our system, and he fits uh, fits us from a culture standpoint as well. Uh, as far as Braden Frager, we're, we're thrilled uh, to have him. He's, he's one of the most athletic kids I've seen uh, in that entire class. Uh, goes up and finishes above the rim uh, with authority. Uh, you know, dunks in a crowd, and he's uh, he's a kid that is really uh, working on and improving his shot. He was a 42% three point shooter a year ago at uh, Southwest. And uh, you can just tell the amount of time that he's putting in uh, to continue to make himself uh, a, a great elite shooter to go with that athleticism. Uh, he's, he's Big Ten body ready right now, even, um, you know, as, as what was a 25 class. But he's, as, as you guys saw, reclassing to 24. And the way that whole process went down is we had a lot of talks with the family, a lot of talks with Braden, uh, just about the different options that he would have. And he's in a position right now where he can graduate He's done a great job in the classroom, and uh, we just all kind of collectively got together and saw that that would be the best option for him. His focus right now is to help Lincoln Southwest compete for a championship uh, for this season, and then we'll look forward to getting him here next summer. With both those guys, how much do they kind of fit this mold, this, not just as players, but cultural, with like the toughness and just kind of the tenacity that they bring? Is that kind of a continuation of this kind of plan for the, the roster that – Basically started last year. Yeah, it's it's the it, the big thing we talk about as a staff is continuing to try to get the guys in here that fit what we want from a culture standpoint. And it started with last year's team. I, I you know I know I say this a lot, but I give Sam Greasel, Emmanuel Bandamel, Derek Walker uh, a ton of credit for really setting the tone every day. And then you get a rink mast and a uh, Josiah Alec. Um, 
you know, Boogie Coleman, you get uh, uh, Bryce Williams in here, and you got guys uh, that fit how we want to go out and compete. I think you saw that with uh, uh, with the exhibition and then with the, with the first game of the season, and hopefully that will continue to ramp up as we go throughout the season. Uh, these two fit exactly what we're looking for from that standpoint. They're ultra, ultra competitive players. Um, like I said, Nick Janowski, you know, he's a guy – uh, he puts the right things in his body. He's already got that figured out. Hell, I went to Taco Bell every Wednesday on my off day when I was in high in college. Uh, but you know, guys that have it figured out early, it's pretty darn impressive. And uh, and and by the way, Robin, I miss those Taco Bell days, man. Those were those were good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's a fun. You know, the, I know those guys are going to be fun to coach because they fit who who we want to be. And uh, you know, again, two guys that I know that uh, that our crowd will rally behind, especially getting a local kid. That's important. <coughs> Uh, you know, to get a guy like Braden Frager, uh, who's right here in our backyard, and uh, he's excited. His family's excited about obviously watching him play. I played in my hometown, and there's nothing like it to have the support of your friends and family and to help you through some tough times. With Braden, uh, with Braden, what was it that you know? What did he do that told you like he's ready to reclassify? He'll be ready a year ahead of schedule. Well, I think it started with his body and his physicality. And you know, when you have that athleticism, he plays in a great program. He plays for a great coach and Alex Baugh, and uh, you know, played in a really good AAU program. And again, he competed uh, at against some really, really high level players, four and five star guys. He didn't back down from anybody. Uh, that's what we love about him. And you know, he's not afraid to go up and try to dunk on an, enti an entire team. And just to see again how his shot <clears throat> has progressed, he was he was really good at our elite camp that we had, and you know to add him to our family is something that uh, that is a great step. Uh, but yeah, he he just felt that you know he'd be ready, to come in, start the player development part as soon as he gets in here in the summer, and just continue to take his game to the next level. Not that guys can't make their own individual decisions, but did Chris Hell sort of show like you know what a local it can look like a local guy having success and. How people got behind that. Yeah, and and I think that's part of it. I think that's part of the reason we got Josiah is he saw the uh, I think the amount of fun that Sam had and, and the, the success that that Sam had here in his final year and being able to play in front of his family, uh, you know, and, and same thing with Braden, you know, to be here, uh, have a chance to play in front of the people that have supported him his whole life. Again, from experience, there's nothing better than that. And he's uh, again a high level competitor. That's the thing we love most about it. And you have to make sure they fit. You know, you can't just take a hometown kid to take them. You have to take somebody that fits in what you do. And I think Braden fits perfectly with how we play. Yeah, looking at Florida and M, um, what goes into preparation against a team that has nine newcomers? There's a whole lot. Of yeah, it's it's always it's always difficult to uh, to prepare. It was the same thing we had in the opener. Uh, we do have a film exchange from their scrimmage. Uh, you know, we get them, give them our uh, uh, exhibition, and, and we get theirs as well. So you get a little bit of a feel for all the newcomers, uh, but it is a completely new team. Um, you know, and, and listening to the comments from from their coach, he said it's the most talent that he's had uh, in the program. And you know, one thing that I learned from last night, one Creighton's really freaking good. Uh, you know, with the way they shot the ball, it was it was very impressive with how uh, you know they got out of the gate in that game. Um, you know, but there there's definitely talent on the floor tomorrow, and, and it's important for us to hopefully get off to a good start and sustain it for 40 minutes. I thought we did a good job of that in the opener against Lindenwood, and uh, it's going to be important to get off to a good start again tomorrow. It's kind of random, but going back to Eli and then the two signees today, they're all lefties. Is that just a coincidence, or yeah, it's kind of the new recruiting model for us, Robin. We're only going to recruit left-handed players from this point forward. Is there anything like schematically or anything that goes into a left-handed shooter that? I always thought it was a little more, it was a little prettier when when left-handed guys. I played with Chris Mullen, who was yeah, the purest shooter, just from a pure shooting form standpoint. And maybe it's because he spent four hours in the gym every day. Um, but yeah, there's something about it. My son Jack was a left-handed shooter. Uh, you know, my twin Sam and his twin brother Charlie, they're left-handed golfers, but they shoot the ball right-handed. But, you know, you see Sam, he's got a very good left hand as he goes uh, to the basket. But, um, yeah, it, I don't know. Again, it's about who they are as players and competitors and how they fit into our system, both offensively and defensively, and they just both happen to be left-handed. But I like their strokes. Both of them have nice compact strokes. As I said, Nick's one of the elite shooters in his class. And, uh, yeah, Kese, he's a pretty good shooter as well, uh, being a lefty. So, yeah, you might be onto something there, Rob. <laughs> uh, you kind of touched on this um, with Lincoln kid staying home. 
Uh, I believe Braden's the first Lincoln High School player to sign with Nebraska since Jake Muehlheisen in 2001 or two. so it's been a while. But you've got three Lincoln kids now um, over the past three classes. <coughs> As a former hometown guy, like you, you kind of touched on the, the value of that and the significance. I mean, what Maybe just expand on, on what that means as a player to represent your home city, be kind of the hometown hero, literally. Yeah, I, I mean, there, there, there certainly is a pride factor in it. And growing up, I went to Johnny Orr's camps at Iowa State, and I was a ball boy when he was really uh, putting Iowa State basketball on the map. And, you know, I just kind of fell in love with that. Uh, you know, I had some great options going out, uh, you know, with some different situation Stanford Arizona uh, you know Nebraska football those types of things but you know for me the right move was to stay home and um, uh, you know play in front of my family and friends and it turned out to be the right move I, I guess the biggest thing is you know with with a guy like Braden he's seen all the different rivalries I think Greasel helped us with that and the importance of different games as you play uh, you know the non-conference and then also the conference games uh, that maybe mean a little extra to the kids that grow up in the state. You know, I experienced that certainly with an in-state rivalry. So, you know, the guys that are grow up in that environment and see those types of games, uh, you know, as a young player, they can educate your team on what it means to the fan base to play in rivalry games. Uh, you know, for us, you know, I, I'm anticipating this is going to work out great. It's a great fit I think both ways I think he fits exactly who we are and I think we'll help him uh, really expand his game and if you have success with it hopefully that opens the door for uh, you know the next generation of, uh, of hometown players but you know we're, we're thrilled man Braden is a just when you look at the athleticism and I think that's where it starts a lot of times you have a size and athleticism and a work ethic uh, you know in, in, in somebody that's going to buy into everything that we're trying to sell to him uh, he's going to grow and be a, a great one. He's uh, he, he's a really really good player, and, and we're excited to have him. With your uh, with your current group of guys, it's obviously been kind of a weird start with guys getting injured. And you have a lot of new guys. What, how far along do you feel like you are in that process of guys getting truly comfortable playing with each other and gelling? With yeah, each other? you know what? That's a great question, Wilson. I, the thing that I really liked in the last game, I thought our guys just went out there. Again, we are read and react. You know, if a player sometimes asks me, where am I supposed to be? And, you know, I think I've said this before. I tell them, I don't know. What did the defender do? If he's in this position, you go that way. If he's underneath you, you come this way. And I thought our guys had some really good reads. And they're making progress in that area of kind of, I guess, improvising a little bit on the court and you know getting the right guy if Casey cuts into the lane you know screen in on him out of the corner we've made some of those reads we had a couple possessions the other night where we didn't call a specific play but we got into an alignment based on where the defense was and we got an open three and we got a layup on two of those plays so our guys are really starting to figure out uh, you know especially now as we get healthy and you're seeing combinations that we kind of envisioned early in the process but now you get Josiah and Rink out there together with Bryce with CJ with Sam with Jerron, with, with uh, uh, Jamarcus, with Eli. I mean, you get different combinations out there, and I think you're seeing, uh, you know, which ones fit. Uh, you know, and we'll get lineup data from every game and just continue to try to make the right decisions to get the right guys on the floor. But, you know, as we continue to get healthy, when we get Kase, when we get Jawan, when we get uh, Ramel, when we get all those guys back, there's going to be a lot of decisions to be made, and, you know, there's going to have to be sacrifice. We've got to going to have a very deep team. And it might not be your night every night, but, you know, if you're truly in for it, for the good of the team, uh, you know, whatever happens, you're, you're going to be a great uh, teammate. You're going to cheer the group on, and you're going to come back ready to work the next day and continue to get better. And I've been really impressed with our guys on how they've handled that so far, uh, even though it's only been one game. But, you know, it's, it's a group that I really do think is in for it uh, for the next guy and, and for each other, and it's fun to coach a team like that. Anything else for Coach? Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you, Fred.